In this lesson, we're going to add some props and little knickknacks to our scene to make it a little more interesting instead of being so plain. So we're going to go ahead and start off by adding a pillar or column right here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead, select our room, hit tab, and notice all of the, the Boolean modifier disappears when we hit tab. And uh, that's because it's just one of those modifiers that you can't see in edit mode. You can turn those options on and off by clicking this button. Let's go ahead and select this vertex. And from this vertex, we're going to create a, uh, um, a column. So we'll hit Shift S, move the cursor there, and then Shift A to create a cube. And notice what happened here. Everything shifted. Right, so we'll go ahead and fix that in a second, but let's let's adjust where this column is going to be. Let's go ahead and keep it at one and a half, maybe 1.25, right? And then as far as our location on the z-axis, we will move it to sit on the floor again. So we'll set it at 1.25 as well. And then we'll go ahead, select this face. And we're just going to move it on the z-axis all the way up to here. I'm just holding control. Notice it's not snapping quite right. So what we need to do is switch it from a, uh, a, a grid snap to a vertex snap. So we'll do that from down here. We'll click on this icon, sorry, this one, and set it to vertex. There we go. And notice it's, it's snapping to that vertex right there. OK. So now, what about this whole offset thing? That's a little bit of an issue. The reason for that is if we go back to our array, it's, a, it's our array that's making it tile that way. We have it set to a relative offset, which means it's taking the bounding box, meaning the, the entire shape here, and it's, it's encompassing it in a box. And basically, it's offsetting it by however big that box is. So notice if I take this and we move it, it'll snap shut again, right? But as soon as we pass that, it starts to shift everything over. How can we fix that? Well, instead of having a relative offset, we're going to create an, a constant offset, which means that instead of accounting for the bounding box, it's going to shift everything by a, a set amount of units. And what we're going to do is, sh is set it at five, uh, 10 units, right? Which is the width of our hallway, sorry. Right, so basically as we adjust this, notice it'll shrink in or span out, right? We wanna set it to 10 because that's exactly how long our, uh, our little modular section is, right? That's good. Now this column is too thick in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shrink it along the Y axis a little bit. And I'm going to select this back uh, so that it's not behind the wall. And I'm just going to grab it, move it along the X axis and snap to that vertex right there. there go. All right. Now let's add a couple of knickknacks in the room. We're going to add some crates and barrels, something real simple but uh, it adds to the uh, the look of the scene. So let's go ahead, select the floor, hit Shift S, cursor to selected, and then let's add some cubes. We'll hit F6 to grab the options. We're going to set the radius here to 0.5 and the Z location to 0.5 as well. And uh, we're moving it around right now. We're moving it in 3D space. Notice here. It's moving off the ground. We don't want that. We want to constrain it to the floor. So as we move, we'll hit Shift Z, which means it's not moving on the Z axis. Okay. okay. And let's stack one more box on top of it. And we can just do Shift A. Uh, no, actually, let's uh, let's grab this and. Uh, Let's go ahead and hit Shift D, and we want to move it just on the Z axis. 
we go. And it's not snapping perfectly. So let's go ahead and delete that. And we'll switch our snapping option again to increment, which means it's going to go up exactly one unit. So we'll use Shift D and we'll uh, hit Z to make sure that it's only moving up and down. And then we'll use Control to make it snap on that axis. And then let's just do a slight rotation here on the Z axis. Kind of make it look like they're not perfectly stacked. There we go. All right, and now let's add a couple of barrels. So what we'll do is we'll take a cylinder, hit F6 again. We want the number of vertices to be 16. We want the radius to be 0.5 and the depth, which is going to be how tall it is, to be one and a half. I think that's good. Okay. Um, we also want it to sit exactly on the floor. So whatever the depth is, we'll put it at half of that. So that's going to be 0.75. There we go. And then we'll use Control R to slice it. And then we'll use S to scale that middle area, right? So now it's got that kind of widened barrel look. We also want to smooth that out a little bit. Right now it's uh, it's very uh, polygonal, right? So we'll hit Control B to stretch it out, and let's use the scroll button to add slices to it. Right. So again, basically, I just hit Control-B for bevel, right? And as I pull, it stretches out how far it is from the center. And then if I use the scroll wheel, it'll add slices. To my bevel. Let's just set it somewhere around there. That's pretty good. I'll highlight it. Uh, or I'll hover over it again and hit L. And then move it. And then I'll hit Shift D to duplicate it. Shift Z to constrain it. And create another one. So now here's our scene with a couple of little knickknacks. Let's go ahead. A door frame. And a pillar. Okay. Um, Alright. In the next lesson we'll talk a little bit about UVs.